So please, introduce yourself. I'm Maureen Harrington. Um, I'd like to put it across to the public of helping the parents as a Mackenzie friend. Um, basically, on the parents have been screwed up very badly and framed up badly. If they got a low education of a high of an IQ below the average of 70, you're more likely to have your child removed. When you go to the Anna Freud, it's a very interesting place. The Anna Freud is set up to make parents look that you're low educate, that you have not read the books. I went to the Anna Freud on the basis I went out there to set my goal to overlook the place and take an overlook of the place. My father stepped in, my late father, and it made it very hard for me to step in his place about his background because I felt if he had not put anything in right and I could speak about him, he could have me for a breach of a contract which you have to protect my late parents' respect because my father, late father came out of the army. I would have been cut out of a will. As they say, money speaks of everything. If you either want your parents for the rest of your life or you want your child to be cut off from your parents. But there is different abuses, sexual abuse, child abuse, neglect abuse. My father's case was was a criminal offence to leave a daughter on the street without a home in the days of 63, 68. If you'd done that today by not paying the rent to the council, you'd be out on the street tomorrow morning by not providing your wife a home and keeping a family stable home as stable, which has happened in my case from the past. So they assume everyone's on that level. When you go into social services, they book you along for an assessment at the Anna Freud. And when you go into these places, they set you up setting a goal for themselves saying that this parent will do the same as her own parents and it goes back to the history where you tell the low educated parents that if you your parents were criminals you're more likely to abuse your own child in that way and this is where the low educated parents don't read the books on the Anna Freud I want this place to be investigated and it it goes down in history for journalists that they could be jailed for exploiting the Anna Freud and for getting their case across to the Anna Freud that Clement Freud was an abuser, a child abuser. How this has all come about because he was actually in the he was actually on you, uh, YouTube from two other parties of mothers have claimed they was abused by Clement Freud. They will never know that this place is an actual paedophile by right, this department in Anna Freud in West Hampstead. Basically, they're there to educate a child's interest that the child is not actually going to be interviewed for the future, which I do understand that's setting aside a separate case to Clement Freud. But the Clement Freud is still exploiting that case for other parents to be punished for his crimes. And you'll put your tarring every parent to be on the same brush as Clement Freud from his past history. For whatever he's done, that past has all been covered up and it's not been exploited to the parents. Hi, I'm very pleased about the Anna Freud. I'm proud to speak up from, about the roots of the Anna Freud through social services. At the time when I was brought up in the care of the social services in my childhood, I found out a lot of information for the way I was treated. At the time when my parents were raising me, they, they didn't give me the insight of an education directly to learn about the Anna Freud. They come from a working class. If they had become a doctor and a teacher, it may have been different and I may have not been in this situation as to what I am now. I find it very strange they've closed this place down to move up to King's Cross so their names are not linked up with the Anna Freud of the, uh, um, the Tavistock Crescent and I need this to be dressed more for parents to be aware of this situation. Um, this 
three to four houses in this road that's actually addressed about the Anna Freud um, where you get assessed by different houses for the parents to go and you're put in a custody suite so directly what happens is that both the parents come both the parents come on the day to visit the Anna Freud and you're put in different rooms as if you're put in a police custody suite and you're put down and labelled to see with what par parents telling the truth so therefore you're raising your child to be either put at risk or to be put, put in the help, help and safetyness of the social services that your child is going to be brought up in, the, in a proper future of an education. It's the same as you going out to adopt a child. If you want to go and adopt a child, this is the way they do it in the Anna Freud if you want your child and you want to buy a child of the state. So you go to the Anna Freud and you say, right, this is what I'm... I'm proving I'm adopted mother, I want a child for the future. When we go in, we're going with our eyes shut. At the time, I had my childhood papers covered up for 48 years. So therefore I wanted the papers to be exploited and opened up. But when I went to the owner Freud, they said I was too clever. And I told them I wasn't going to go into my parents' history without the consent of my parents and without them signing to a contract. My father had only just lost his wife, which was, was going to be my mum included. And at the time she can't defend her actions and you can't defend someone's actions if the deceased person is gone. So therefore my father was still liable to take out a case against the Anna Freud. But because he was in such a state he was disgusted the way they treated him and his wife. He didn't see the side that they was keeping the grandchild safe at the time. And for the interest that if I still went on to do the assessment, I still would have lost a child, regardless of the case. And then I could have sued the unemployed for attending all the appointments. I had done. I had attended a few appointments. They came to Clare Gardens in Labour Grove to see me. The best part about this case, my child, who's now gone on 18, was taken from the age of 5 years of age, from 11 years ago. Corrado is a loving child. I can't ask for a better child from my own child. What's hurt me is the child is being overrided by the social services under Kensington Chelsea and given the wrong information, not clearly, that he didn't have a disability on his child protection notes, which claimed that the adoption parents, Kathy and David Mullen, were, were put on that on that adoption paper for to have a child that was not actually having a disability at all which was completely untrue. In my interest the adopted parents were getting a sum of money of 1,012 uh, one, one, uh, 12 grand to that effect to get the first time off a payment for a grant from my child. In that time I had made contact with the doctor parents friends on Facebook to let them know of what had gone wrong. This child was taken by the state and sold on to the state. Hi, this is the doctor that took my child from me and made me out to be low educated. During that time when I was interviewed, I went along to the Anna Freud Centre. I brought my child along the first day and he was well kept and cleaned and well loved and fed. But the doctor parents didn't want to know the truth to be known that they had the child taken from the state. Sadly, <coughs> I've only got the evidence from my own son and from his own verbal mouth that he was verbally abused by the doc by an in uh, by a father I'd chosen to be a good, excellent father, Mr. Joseph Hammond. He's accused the father of certain alleged allegations that are disgraceful on the grounds the doctor parents have fed this child information or the, doctor, or the social services before he was handed over to the doctor parents, including the foster mother, Mr. C Mrs. Chris Heaney. Doing killed him more or less. Yeah, well, I was just discussing about this. Uh, Freud's um, 
her daughter Anna Freud. She, she yeah, uh, she was. Um, do you mind if I film you? Oh, yeah, no. No. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Would you mind if I film? No. Uh, no. Uh, no. For what? What is this for? Well, doing. Uh, I'm making a film about my own, my own life, of what they've done to me, and removed my loving child from me, on the grounds of the basis I was a good mother towards my child. And at the end of the day, my late father was around, came out of the army. And for what happens, they've taken my child away due to my parents' upbringing from my parents' background. And I find it wrong. Most of the parents that have grown up today are becoming parents, so have no insight to this. So say, for example, you've got mental health issues from your past, they will actually talk that child off of you. So this is the insight. So if you didn't know anything about Marlon Monroe as a singer, the cause is that they will make they make that breakthrough that you're on the same level as her, and they paint everyone as the same paintbrush. Yeah, yeah. She yeah. inherited her money to this department. Did you know this? Uh, she she inherited her money oh, to no. a rich doctor here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But through if you Google the um, Marlon Monroe side of her, the real side of her, uh -huh. it all explains the lot what's gone wrong uh -huh. because she was medically put into institution years ago into an orphanage and had went from her mother with schizophrenia she went for a bad time and you could have all the money in the world but the money is made made her famous but look what they've done to her the Anna Freud killed her near enough made her suicidal for the effects of what she's gone through because the Freudian way of doing things is to suppress and if uh, you if you show any eccentricity or if you show that you're moving away from the norm, then there's a problem with you. That's right. And that you shouldn't be encouraged to express yourself, that you should be encouraged to repress. Oh, yeah. But the more tendencies. you work with them, the more you're showing that you're more depressive for their department to make the story up as if they're famous and you're nothing. And you went for help. You had no idea of this, of this background of what they was doing to your son. You just yes. went out there for help, yeah. for, uh, for help yeah. and you was reaching for your concerns of your son. But did you have any idea what was going on or what, what there had been? Had you signed a contract? Yeah, had I, you in the beginning I didn't sign a contract. It's my partner that signed the contract mm. and uh, they wanted me to sign. But before I, I didn't even know the purpose of the contract. Yeah. That Okay, Ledela told us that the contract is for them to have, uh, to share the parental responsibility. Yes, yes. Yeah, I said that is fine. Can yeah. share it with us since you are the one that is going to fund the education of my son yeah. and going to be responsible for all the financial aspect. Yeah. Yeah. That is very good, yeah. and also we be able to liaise with us to tell you the best way forward. Yeah. Yeah. In order to bring a positive change for my son, right. that was my intent. That is my intention. Yeah. But unknowingly to me, they have another intention which they kept secret, right. which is that. To take our son under a what they call a care order, whereby we will not have any right again. Okay. That was their intention. That's what their intention. Yeah, what but to... well, we didn't know about this no. one. Yeah, and they are so experienced in this matter. Oh yeah, they're very yeah, crafty, they, they are very, very experienced, and yeah. then we are just an innocent parent, just like I mean, everybody trusts the government for help. Yes, yeah. yeah you, so I you mean, government. Trusting... You government is there to, to help you. Yeah, to help Especially you. this service is not available. Did you have any support workers? Any support worker? Yeah, mom support. used to have support worker. But because she wanted to, you know... Be independent. To, yes, independent. Yeah. So that whenever she feel like she can go for full-time studies and full-time work because... Time we are out, to have time out. Yeah, yeah. So and that... Did she meet up with any other parents that had autism children? She used to, but she never suspected something like this. She never kept in touch with any other Yeah, she was a children. very quiet woman. Oh, that's she sad. She never knew that... Um, or did she feel isolated? She thought, well, I'm one out, and if somebody else... If I go no. to tell, tell someone, yeah. they might think there's something wrong with me. Yeah, is yeah. it because of my gender, or is it because of my culture? They think, oh... What's wrong with you? you yes, know, you're, I or mean, is it because your husband's done something to the child? This is how they use all the evidence, and it's totally wrong. She's just somebody that is very quiet. Yeah. And uh, I used to go and help her every day oh. because we are not living together. 
Oh, that's so nice. uh, every now and then I have to go to the house to take my son out. Oh. Because uh, my son, the only thing he wanted in his life is physical exercise. Yeah, well they do. They, they want just like they just like going. It's just like going out every day. Yeah, yeah, and they so, don't sit still. And that was with my intention that okay, the local the government will be able to have uh, facilities where they can be taking him out every day, and mm -hmm. where I will be particip yeah. participating in the in his care. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was my intention, so that I will only do that whenever I'm free. Yeah, yeah. You understand? That yes. mean I can go to work and whenever the work give me permission, I yeah. can go there. That was my intention. Yeah. But all of a sudden, I went to see the place and I realized that it was not according to what the, the book they gave us, that they are doing some form of education for autistic children. Mm -hmm. They are not doing any book there. They are not doing any education there. They are not training them to become no, better. No. No, they're just there as they just, animals. They, they just, just lock them the children up. children like an animal, red, because yeah, they're they they, just, they just um, using them like a, a subject. So the first time I went wrong. there, I, I, I noticed all this. Uh, I say, am I dreaming? Um, so I said to myself, I have to go back the second time. to, And the second time I went, that was when I, I was able to, to say that, no, they can't continue looking after my son like this. So I told them that we have to end this uh, contract, whatever contract my wife has signed. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I get back to home that day, I was very sad. And uh, nice. so when uh, I called the social service the second day, I said, I need to end. I didn't know a lot of things has been going on in the background mm. in order to get this child from me. Yeah. And from the border, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. You understand? So, yeah. but they have prepared the ground. Yeah. So, Aina told me that um, there's a big concern. That uh, that concern is very big. That um, I can't see my son again. Oh, that wow. I have to come to court. I said, what for? Uh -uh. See, I should collect, contact my solicitor. I said, uh -uh. solicitor. So, I kept calling the solicitor. He's not answering me. So, unknown to me, they have sign some, um, make a document that I went to the care home to injure my son. Oh, God's sake. So they know what you, yeah. they were planning. They are planning, so. Yeah. Because my son was locked they up. Plan, in a, they plan it was, with the, they plan it with the. In the same situation, like locked up with the, with with the in solicitor. Um, yeah, in That uh, I went there to, I said, uh, so it was, I never know this. So two weeks after that, I went to court. And my solicitor brought out the concern. I said, ah, where do you get this from? Why don't you tell me? Yes. So I was asking everybody, and the judge said that because I was asking too much question, they're going to give my son interim care order. Terrible. That was the end. Sorry, what was Interim the care order. Interim care it, order. Yes. They, they have control. You don't have nothing. Yeah. Yes. And they said because of they that. They take the control. That was, yeah, that's how the... That was 2018. And up, the, up to now, I've been asking questions. Asking, they don't reply. I've been asking questions. Asking. So the solicitors are all behind it. Yeah, the solicitor is behind it. So yeah. I had to take the solicitor to court. Terrible. And Did you not sack her and say, right? No, 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 no. no. I, no. You can't even if you sack her, he's been paid by the government. No, but you can sack your judge. Uh, no, your yeah, judge I've, I've sacked her, but that's not the problem. He was employed indirectly by the social services yes. because they were the one who gave me the solicitor yeah. as to help me. Yeah. But he's, she's supposed to advise me what I'm but entering. She's not better, she's, she's, she's not there. going to tell no, me. No, she's there for the social workers. She's there for. But what I'm saying is, you need to sack her so you can speak to your own presenting present. To yeah, but present I, yourself in I, the court. I, alone as soon as they get the, no, as soon as they get the interim care order, you can't see anything again. No, did you? Have, against that? I appeal because, I mean, everybody know in this country, as at that time, I've been in this country for 40 years. So yes. I know that when you appeal, you have to be based on evidence Everything. and facts. Facts and findings. Yeah, yeah. facts finding. So yeah. that's what I thought. That's what I'm used to. Yeah, yeah I appreciate it. For 30 that. years, I've been doing that. If you yeah. do. So unfortunately, the appeal said that, no, they are not going to hear the appeal. Yeah. I said, why won't you hear the appeal? Where is the fact and 
figures so, and everything. So if someone told you, like Social Worker, you ain't got a case to uh, uh, answer because yeah. you, can't, you can't appeal. Yeah, can I appeal? So you just listen to what they say. Yes. So, so you don't listen to them. They're trying to put you off. You need to go back to court and appeal against it, like a Yeah, I appeal against it, but no, but you appeal. But they 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 say, 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 they say the appeal it does not qualify for hearing. Oh, that's discussion. You need to go further about this. Yeah, because. I've been doing that for the past two years, but I didn't get anywhere. But you, we've got Simon. Now they, they they because I've been asking them so many questions, they now say they're going to put no molestation order on me again. The minute you apply to do anything to fight for your son, Maureen, mm. they will lock you up. You have to be very careful with the law, with the social services. The minute you breach anything, they will lock you up. You need to put a few words in writing. If you don't tell me this and we don't, you don't cooperate within 28 days, I'm taking you further and you need to sack the social worker. And this was an actual bloke that lives in Elton, Mr. Mark Rogers. He's very experienced. Is he a lawyer? Or is he well, free? he's a freelance editor, but he's excellent in every way. But I had I didn't him know about all this before. Oh, I had him in my place for a long time, over five years. But because my place was being monitored by a third party over a sly fox, assuming I was having an affair with an old man, uh, and beyond a joke, this man was lovely. He had three children of his own. His wife committed suicide. Um, took her, he's a, took her own life. She was an actual solicitor. He was a freelance editor, and he had to get out of his own home because the children was literally upset for the past past evidence of whatever happened in their marriage and directly he said to me directly I need somewhere to stay and live on the grounds to from I'm only living on sleep and sofa sofa I don't want to live in the same house as my children I don't want to live under the government rules to pay rent I don't want them to know where I live and where I don't live because I feel disgusted I'm paying money to keep the paedophiles to abuse my children, abuse other children in care homes, and that's about the rent. That's what he was over. So he was coming here on the grounds of the bases in my sit room to stay every night and obviously help me with paperwork. But he said, your case is very, very difficult to get somebody to look into your case. I had three children from my first marriage, from my first common law marriage, and he, the, then I had the fourth child by the second relationship. He said, but what we've got to do, because it's gone so long and out of date, because your parents are obviously coming in up to the years of their death. He said, at the time, we need to look into it as to why they took in your child from years ago, from 48 years ago. They've used your child as a, as a potential threat from your parents' evidence from 48 years ago. So therefore... They've taken your child on the pretense of that, but we need to have a proper barrister that will act on three parts, which is your mum, your parents' case, your late parents' case. Then there's another person that would need to help you on the basis of that is a, a barrister that's going to act appropriately and act correctly. We need that to fight the case. And at the end of the day, it's... You've got to have passionate for someone to understand what disability is all about, about autism. And if you've not read the files of autism, children, and read the files of uh, Bernardo's, this all comes back to beating children up where they don't have a voice to be heard. Now, I don't know where they put him. I cry every day at night. It is very sad. And psychological trauma, so I mean very painful it is very sad for me to, i didn't know where my son is even for a father to have a disabled child that one is enough in itself then for government to now use this child because of their own selfish interest it is very very painful now they now want to turn against me by taking me to magistrate court for breach of non-molestation order which no molestation order is used to protect victims of crime, not to protect the criminals. But they are now using non protection order to protect themselves and telling me they are fearful of their life. 
and I told and I prayed that when I go to Magistrate Court, they will be able to listen to me and ask them to prove to provide the facts, the evidence to say that they are I am a threat to their life. If they can provide it, but they cannot provide it, they don't provide it in a family court. But I've asked the magistrates court lawyers and uh, judges to ask them evidence of this uh, why they have to issue no molestation order. It's not good just for you to issue no molestation order, not to do, I mean, to say, okay, you've been issued no molestation order, not to see your child again. Why? You have to give them the reason why you don't want me to see my child. What kind of normalization it's order disgusting. is that? That's disgusting. I mean, I've not committed crime against my well, child. Well, it's like saying it, was, it was you that committed crime against my child. Well, they're doing it. The same and I've reported to the police that this is the crime you have committed against my crime. Oh, yeah, I appreciate that. And the police have not done the investigation up to today. Well, it's the same as when you go, if you, they do the same on the grounds when you, you go, go to social services directly and you say, look, my husband's beating me up. Mm. So I know this does happen in the past and the husband will turn around and go and breach the order and they have a anonymization order and then they retract that and they actually have the guy taken away so he can't go back to the house. But there's always a toxic relationship and mother will always ask for the person to come back then that way, she tricks and frames the father up to come back. Next thing, he's blocked up again for that non molestation order on the grounds the same as social services are doing. So they do exactly the same. So literally, social services are saying, well, you've got non molestation order, but if you go there again, you'll be locked up. You'll be in a prison. So you've actually got a, pr a criminal record. You can't even get a job. You'll be, you know, you've lost your job then. Penalised. Yeah, Penalised for someone yeah, else's crime. Yeah, yeah that's, And it's uh, totally wrong. They don't care. They just want, now they destroy your son. Oh, destroy your son. Now they want to destroy the father. Yeah, destroy the father as if he's a noble for, person. For, I mean, it's like, this is no longer United Kingdom. No, it's not. No. It's like, I mean, it's not, because... Like going back to slavery I, times. I be, yeah, this is... Um, unbelievable is going on because i've been in this country um for 38 years almost 40 years yeah and then i never heard that uh, the government are there to punish you for nothing i told the government are there to help you we all trusted the government and i never see this coming at all oh, they let you down so yeah. hopefully this court case in january yeah. Case will be sorted out by the yeah by grace the grace of, of God. God. Yeah, I hope this court case we open up a lot of um, thing they have been hiding. You understand? Because yes. they're hiding a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And now I don't know where my son is. I just don't know. It's very painful. It's very sad. Every mm. night I cry. Terrible. Because every time I remember my son that he cannot talk. And I used to be able to talk. That's a For over 10 years, I, I, I look after myself. I used to look at other people that have perfect children. I say, God, well, why do you give me this? But I say, well, I just to look after him. I've been looking after him. In order to look after him more, that's why I want the government to help me. Yeah. But the government have another intention. They turn on you. Instead and of assisting you. But God's still on the throne, so all will yeah, be well. Yeah, I trust God. You're going to get your son back. Yeah, well, well, I'm, the grace I'm, well, of God. Apart from that, I have to fight for myself now. Well, they put a normal decision order against me. And and I'm, 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 I'm because I'm a Christian, and what the Bible says is that the the world is full of wickedness. I never believe it. I thought it was it's my country that is full of wickedness. I didn't know that. Uh, I me, mean, where I'm, where this country has looked after me for 38 years. This is where I make money. This is where I look after people in my back home in Africa. I never know they can turn against you like this. I used to call this country my home, and I tell people, 
um, you know, your own country. They will say your own country is Africa. No, I say my my country is a country that is looking after me, giving me daily living from my income I send to my country, Nigeria. I help people there. But I never know they can do this to to a vulnerable child because he's, he's, he's not able to talk. He can't defend himself. And I'm speaking for him. I'm speaking for him. They say I cannot speak for him. Mm, terrible. They say I cannot speak for him. But it's my child. So the court case is in January. End of January? Yeah. It, uh, no, there's a one next week. Oh, no. That is in Wales. For okay. going to celebrate his birthday with him. Okay. You understand? And then they are put in a normalization order, which I, I didn't even know that I should not see him. And they won't give you the reason. They will just tell you, no, 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 don't yeah. go there. And I was asking the judge, they should provide evidence why I cannot see my son. You understand? I know there's a normalization order. Before you can get a normalization order, you have to say, this is why this man cannot see his son. You understand? You have yeah. to say that. So that's why I'm going to court next week to look at the evidence. If they cannot prove the evidence, that means they are guilty of perjury for making false statement to get a non molestation order. Because non molestation order is only if I, somebody is a threat to you. Yes, yeah, yeah. You know, or yeah. to his son. Totally disgusting the way you've been treated. So they just put there, because of the condor of father, we should put non molestation order. So they need to That's explain. They just find lies up and they find they, an excuse. They need to explain this they condor to, they are they talking about. They find a paper to come out the woodwork, out their cupboards, mm. just to find a, a non molestation order. Oh, this is a good one. We'll keep the child away. That's mm. a good order. For, for the father not to have got no contact. That way, again, the presence of the judge. How is the judge going to look at that? When he hasn't seen the evidence, he's never touched a child. But you see, they're using the evidence against the social worker to be believed that he actually went and threatened the child's life. Yeah. And that's what they're using. And the yeah. judge believes that. Yeah. You've got a corrupted judge as well that just believes what comes out their mouths. So they're there working together, you know. And then they're saying, yeah, they, they well, they're together. saying at the end of the day, well, we don't know the father's background as to how safe he was with the child from the start. That's why he had to come in care. So we need that child to be well away from the father because he could be molested. Another thing, once a child goes into a care home, these children are put up and they're overridden by social services. This is another thing I forgot to tell and um, request on the film. When a child is actually... When a child is actually presented in the care home they they don't know their own sexuality their own bodies my son was born with this hydrocell have you ever heard of that hydrocell so if the child is born with this the child has no an autism child does not know the education of hydrocell that means it, it was the child was left dormant in the mother's womb too long. And I was over, I had the child over 42 weeks. So there's problems with the child's disability from the birth. I've got evidence exactly addressing the case that my child was born with a hydrocell from the medical doctors. And he was seen from the day he was born from the health visitors directly. So I got evidence to provide that my son was not abused by the health visitor from the day he was born. But because he was removed from my care, there's been misunderstanding from social services. This is what Mr Mark Rogers put and to rest assure my, ex my past partner about his case to his own mother. There's been a mysterious understanding about serious alleged allege allegations concern your son, Joseph. He, it's been made out that I've been accusing him of interfering with Corrado. In the first place, no one has interfered with Corrado. He was born with a medical condition, condition called hydrocell, which is classed with, which is classed as testicle cancer. 
The doctors were, who were involved knew what Corrado's condition was at the time. The problem arose round with social workers in the case who were more concerned that I should go to the Anna Freud Centre and put into psychotherapy. That meant they had an interim care order against me to go to the Anna Freud that if I didn't go they would take that child off me and that's what they've done to this guy here in my presence. And they ignored the doctors and the health officers and eventually rumours started going round and were taken up by the foster mother and that Corrado had been abused. I have always stood up for Joseph Hammond and the allegations made against them have always come from other par parties. I've always denied them and he's a good man. I would never say one word against him. All these allegations have led his character to being destroyed in the eyes of social services and certain members of the public. Nevertheless, the idea that it was me that tried to destroy his... It was the idea that it was me to try to destroy the, his character is wrong and disgusts me that members of Jovita's family would be, would be believed that I would make such allegations I never did. And please call me and let me... let. Please call me and let me know that you have read this letter and I understand that I'm trying to stay uh, sincere. And I had Mr Joseph Hammond interviewed by the police because he threatened to cut my throat in Nature Road over this before, it hit the, before the horse had bolted the door. So I need, to, I need this to go out because he's literally being... He needs to take a file against social services of being accused of something he'd never done. And that's why he's gone into another relationship. He's split up and he's destroyed. Social services have destroyed the family again twice over. My son has put on these screen messages that he was abused by his stepfather as to what he wants to know his birth father and that he's actually abused Mr. Joseph Hammond as being a paedophile. Now, to me, that goes live coverage. How does that look for me when he's actually putting that guy down in the wrong when you forget to realise when he gets to know the truth he doesn't know anything about the medical condition that he was born with. So he's a cure. See, autism children don't understand the full investigation of a medical condition. They twist it worse than what it started with. So say for an example, you're born with a medical condition, but they twist it worse and say the father abused him. And that's what they've done to this Teo. Teo. So whatever has happened in the past, they will override the autism child and tell lies on him and say that the child told us that he was abused by him. That's why they've got a non a non molestation order against him, to state that the child has told us. But that child has not got a voice. Mm, has got a voice. He's not got a voice in the eyes of the law of the social services. And even when he becomes 18, they will move him somewhere else. Just praying that the I'll be able to succeed in this uh, no molestation order. That's my prayer. And I'm looking for anyone who can help me to um, make the public aware of what is going on. If they cannot, at least to help my son and to make him come back to his parents and to let social service to leave him. Autism is not a crime. Mm. The parents are not criminals. Mm. And if you know that um, you have other intention, it is very difficult for any parent to live like this. I mean, why do they want to subject me to, to this kind of pain every day? I, I, I'm, I'm sure they have children as well. That is what I don't understand. The social services have children. Do they have children that they love? I'm not sure if they have. Well, Sometimes they... it's about money. Sometimes. Yeah, but do they have their own children that they love? Mm -hmm. And then, as they are loving their own child, have, have they ever think that they are killing some other parent? Well, they're doing it for a policy. They go by the law, you see, when they're called Yeah, in. what kind of... I, when they, they say... By, it's not what that, I heard is that they're making... It's not the actual making... social worker that comes in to do the job. They're threatened by their own bosses. 
that they make the money. By the I mean, process. So you what kind of, the I mean, what kind of money is that? I mean, that you have to use human being to make well, money. Well, they know money goes round, so they want to Yeah, have there's a, job. a lot of money. I mean, I mean, I don't know. They've already got a job that hand them an average salary of thirty thousand pounds. I mean, so what else money do they want by doing this? I mean, for I mean, it's just blood money, and one day the blood will speak at the appointed time because that's what I know but I just want them to stop this behavior this uh, criminal I mean wicked is very wicked and anything that is wicked is not is not good I always I mean I always know that wickedness will not last forever yeah. I always know that and I know that um, I'm not going to suffer for long that um, I will get help at the end of the day because I've been in this country for 38 years. I never lose any battle, you know, and I'm not going to lose in this one. God will rise up for me at mm -hmm. the end. My God will rise up for me. My, we got, my God will, will defend the poor. He always defend, he's a defender of the poor. He's a defender of the poor. He always put the wicked at their right place at the right time. But you will never know how God is going to do it. That is why I don't know how God is going to But I know God has a plan. He always has a plan. This is Dave Witcher from Kent, so and he speaks about so so, so the Cinderella courts and about the Royal Court's justice. Well, he speaks about the Cinderella courts and about it's all made up like a fairy tale. Once you get in there, you look around and you can, you can, he can tell you the lot what goes on. You go on to his Facebook, add him. He any messages he will get back to you and give you insight of information. And he is more educated in the law, what's gone wrong, or everything. Um, I've never met him, but I've spoken to him on the phone from live from the from the phone. Hello, my name is Lydia Miller. I am here from Wales, up in London, um, with Maureen Harrington. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here. Um, she's helped me out with the the fear to get up here to, because of the way I've been treated by local authorities. It cost me £31 to get up here. Um, Maureen Harrington helped with that and um, £41 for an Easter card to get around till Tuesday so I can get to the High Court and put my papers in um, due to all the corruption and lies from local authorities in Pembroke County Council. Um, I've been very ill-treated and so have my children. We've tried very, very hard to get this case sorted. I even put a paper form in last year which they said they didn't receive. So I'm actually handing it in today to make sure they get it. So I'm up here until Tuesday with Maureen's help and staying at Maureen's to be able to get everything sorted out for, so that I can so that I can fight properly for my children back. Um, it's been a hard, long fight, especially with all the, the corruption and lies that come with the local authorities. So um, I'm handing the, look, the papers in today and hopefully we'll get all sorts of with a judge as soon as possible. So did you hand in your application? Yep. Yeah. yeah, put it in the box. So you just put it in the box? Yeah, it's good I mean, what's going on? Where are we? Well, I'm at the centre of interviewing more parents, so if it's located on film, I'd be able to get my case out to the public. 
because at the end of the day this is what I want for the public to see and a, an actual film to go out directly and made public on footage to the film people. I want this actually to be addressed on ITV News or to the actual make a footage of them to our program about this for other parents to get involved and do a quite a big series about this because I feel that the men I've been around involved in my life have been more intelligent and helped me a long way um, and I've become a show ashamed of the good looking guys I was with in my time but I felt what am I doing with someone good looking on the grounds I come from a broken home and I felt they just took advantage of me because of my 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 good nature I don't know or because they felt they could just walk over me and not see through them of what they was up to at the time that I just I don't know it's very upsetting and very um, close to tears that I love the guy in my life Joe Hammond that's my main concern but what he's done he never touched that child and I swear that my mum's life and I want this to be posted out to everybody because this guy will never my son will never rest till he gets his um, justice. Uh, the Century of the Soul. Oh yeah, lovely. Uh, Check that on out YouTube. on YouTube. It's okay. on YouTube. It's a four-hour documentary series, and he talks about the difference between uh, Freudian school uh, way of doing things and Wilhelm Reich, yeah. which is the polar opposite of uh, Freud. Which, uh, oh, lovely. Uh, and uh, he encouraged um, his patients to actually inter to connect with those feelings. Oh, lovely. And not to suppress them the way Freud uh, and Anna Freud. Uh, uh, she was. Um, she was uh, very much um, a protagonist of her father's um, way of thinking. Well, Clement Freud, he was a paedophile. Mm. Did you know this? No, I didn't. He was Clement Freud, he was a paedophile. He and my late father was a painter for that guy. And during that time, he abused two mothers, and I've got it on YouTube, the whole lot. And it's very interesting. And to do with Maddie McCann? Yeah. Ten minutes away from Portugal, he's on holiday. She's missing, and so is... Clement Freud. This all needs to be opened up like a can of worms. They're making money out of a mint and it's totally wrong. I'm proud of Fiona Freud for what's opened up a can of worms to low educated parents because most of the low educated parents don't have any idea of this. And I find I'm interviewing parents that have no idea of Fiona Freud and they go, What's Fiona Freud? Is that a family? Is that a name? So you don't know anything about Fiona Freud? Well, look up. Mother Monroe, how did she die? The suicidal effects has made her really crucial to side effects mm. when she's been to see these doctors. Yeah. They gave her an amount of money to pass her off so she wouldn't come back and sue them. But I think half the time when you're under medication, you think someone's helping you, or oh, we'll give you some money, to shut you up. And it's all about blackmail. Yeah. The same as they moved out. And now they moved to King's Cross, so they don't want to be notified as to what they've done wrong with the parents. They're moving to secret locations all around, so you can't, you can't monitor what they're doing. It's like closing down a children's home. They've been being abused, so they close that down, so you don't know what's going on. And it's all totally wrong. I mean, my child's now gone 17. They made 12 grand out of my child, 1,200. The first time gets one first off, off grant. And it's quite interesting because the doctor parents have got my child in Ireland and now they've turned around and said my child was abused. Well, if that was the case, where was the police? My child suffered hydrocell. And I can show you the signs of what hydrocell is. Inside the museum, and the Freud Museum. Um, I'm very proud to be up here today that I can get my voice out to all the parents because if parents have been organised to go to another centre in, in King's Cross, which is just off the Pennsville prison, I believe. That's where they've moved to. I find it very strange. They don't want it linked up with the Tavistock Crescent no longer. And their main building has just been closed down. So whoever goes there needs to be investigating these places very closely. Because they turn around and say, we're not linked up with the Tavistock. And it's all, it's all in the same road at one time. And this lady was Minna Dawn. She, brought, she interviewed me in my own home in Holland Park Avenue and done a lot of footage coverage on my child by coming in my home, preventing me seeing my mother a little bit longer. Um, and during that time, she wanted to work around the child's development. And in that time, my child was very hyperactive. All the doors was taken off in the property. 
So it meant I had to take all my doors off, but I didn't have no front, no sitting room door, no kitchen door, no bedroom door, because it's literally out of bounds. He would have shut his fingers in every door just for dibment. Um, he's a lovely child and, and everywhere and I will never forget my son. I'd like to teach families going into, into places like this if they have worries and fears of going into assessments of the unemployed or psychoanalysts. That's what my study is out to be of presenting to parents to keep themselves up kept, not on kept because they will have their children removed. If you show a footage of your child going around in a an actual clothing store, which is another issue I would like to bring up, and it's very dangerous, clothing store, and a child goes towards the mannequin and pulls the underwear off this certain item, that parent is not actually educating that child that he's, the child is now classed as a paedophile. And this must be addressed because it's now got out of order. Because at the, the end of the day, we're saying we're partly educating children from the day they grow up, but they're not, they're growing up too fast to become a paedophile for the future and going online to getting hold of 13 year olds. And to me, this is what the nationwide hunt needs to be searched about parents showing young children under the age of five to go and get a hold of a manicure. Um, it's very disturbing, I find, for a child to get hold of a, a, a body that may not talk, but then you're pulling knickers down off a, a mannequin. You know, you can't do that because I just interviewed the guy the other day and I said, was there any child abuse? And this has got to be told about this on coverage. If the Anna Freud see parents like this and you're teaching children, I want this to go back to the Anna Freud that I'm helping parents like this. So therefore they might give me a job and turn around and say, well, would you like to come and sit and interview parents? Would you allow your child to do this in a mannequin? They need to show pictures of like this to the parents. Would you agree to this? Because at the end of the day, do you think this is right? Do you think this is wrong? Because if a child goes into a store and runs around and sees it all exciting, the parents don't see the insight of what the unemployed are looking at and social services. We blame social services for a lot of things, for being, oh, they're the ones that are removing our children from money. But you don't realise it's the parents that don't keep their self clean. You know, if you're not kept clean, all this is going to be thrown back in the parents' faces and then your children are going to be removed. I don't think she really understands the insight of what social services do to parents that people, some people can't celebrate Christmas when they've got their children around or when they've lost their parents. That's another issue. It comes a sad time when we lose our parents at Christmas. It comes a grieving time, not a happy time for Christmas. She asked me if I had Christmas up. How can you celebrate Christmas when you've got all this going on? COVID-19. Go out and celebrate. You can't go in the pub. You can't celebrate. You can't... You want your child back and you want to put a jigsaw together to fix the puzzle together with your own children. I'm not coming on here for attention. I'm coming on here for a serious case that the case gets exploited about the unemployed and about third parties of helping other people's cases that need help and that people can be trusted in my care. On the example, the example, when you go to help parents, you find a lot of cases that have been misled. They've taken their money and been misled and they said they would help them and then they've run off and they've got in there into the homes and then they want a brothel instead. And these are friends of Mackenzie friends that think they're friends and they're not friends. And to me, they're either up there for alcohol or anything like that. I've had my place turned over and I've had to have my place be monitored for five years. And this is a very serious case. I have a third party that I looked after for a long time. And I will go into it because I feel disgusted. He's trying to portray my trust, thinking he can get into my home. 
I told him I would look after this guy on the grounds he wants to respite from his wife who had dementia. I was only told from a third party that Fatima had told me directly, Fatima Lucia, who told me directly, be careful of your home. He will try to get into your home when you're out and watch you from when you go out and when you come in. And he's asking me what times are you coming and going from your home from another third party called Judith. This person had a second hand shop in the Harrow Road. Very excellent guy. Anyone knows him, he will take advantage of any young girls and say that he's got a place in Holland Park Avenue to rent, which is not the case. I'm warning you, whoever comes to my home, my case, my place will be filmed and be filmed for this guy that he will never get into my home and for another girl not to be actually framed up that this girl's got a home with this guy. He's telling a lot of lies that he's actually single when he's got a dementia wife. He's told a lot of lies to his wife that I was wealthy when that's not the case. I'm fuming because it was an old lady that set me up and told a lot of lies before she passed away and it was a wind up joke. She went around telling a lot of lies that she was going to go with my late father and have his last leg over. But it turned into something really bad that my place was turned over from my late father's place I was never to get anything from my father because my dad's sister stepped in and taken over as if she was the sole executive of the will. Another case had been investigated and I had been turned over twice over. She went along to Mr to a third party who owned a second hand shop in the Harrow Road, Mrs. Pat Cooney from East Acton and her son Vernon, who had sliced a single bed down with a knife in Barbie Road and saw no money in the house and thought there was great money to get out the house from my late father. All that was interesting was my dad's interest of money. When I got the childhood papers that were covered up for 48 years in my case that I was abused as a child from neglect of being abused on the street without a home in neglect of an edu education. So therefore I wasn't sexually abused, it was a case I was abused on the ground that I was left without a home. And I don't want people to get the wrong information. The information can be twisted by social services. And this is what they like to put in their papers and their reports when you don't see the papers. They put it towards the judges in a different way. And they want to put their case forward to a judge so that obviously the judge wins the day for the social services and they go in the favour of the social services. They only get three pieces of paper to read. They don't get the full extent. They go by... How would you be different to your parents from when you was a child in 63? We all lived in broken homes. We all came from a broken home. We all came from a home that you helped each other out. Years ago with a bag of sugar, if you was down and out, you went to next door, you got some money. Now today you can't trust anyone. They take that money and take advantage. This guy that I met from 11 years ago might be more fell in love with me because I asked him to take a bed to Essex to deliver a bed to Essex in um, Stanford, Leah Ho Hope down in Grace. I trusted that guy. The reason why you might ask me, anyone from the public eye, is because I was raped and I was, a ch I was attempted rape. I was raped in 1982. Then I become a child, I become, uh, become an adult victim of attempted murder and uh, nearly, nearly murdered at the time. I was going out with a professional doctor and at the time I put him into rehab after my child going into care. He needed help badly. He lived in Notting Hill, we both went to childhood school together 
By the time years later, I met him in a pub. He was associating with friends in Notting Hill. My injuries are very, very severely bad. I just, the, the injuries are quite bad. I can show you the photographs of the injuries. People say, why do I carry the photographs around with me? Well, I like to take the photographs around to prove that this guy was at his mother's house and I was in my father's house when these injuries were taken. When I was walking from a local pub up to my dad's house, I was framed up and set up from a girl that he was associating with to prevent her getting another beating from a bloke. But it apparently came back to me that I got the beating for helping the guy to keeping the guy safe as an alibi. And that's how it worked out. I was lucky to be here. Regardless of the fact the guy took me to the hospital and got my lips stitched up. I thought the world of the guy. People say to me, Do you regret going with the guy? Do you... Did you have love for the guy? I can't... When you look into it, you think, well how many... How many more women is he going to jump onto? to be that weak, vulnerable person. What lies is he told to the next woman, the next victim? He said he was grateful for me helping him to put him in the rehab. But as he told the real truth, that he left my injury so severe that I, I, left, I had a mouth that had to be stitched together because of the injuries. Obviously I had a sick father. I would have still carried on with that guy to, to have a relationship. But once someone goes in a rehab, they can't come back to the person, with the person, to go back to that person that's in Notting Hill, because they will fall back into drink again, and rehab, you can go re relapsing. So in that time, I settled down with Mr. Joe Hammond, Joseph Hammond, with my child. In that time, we split up, gone back. But in that time, he only wants me for pleasure. But it doesn't work out I, I, I don't sleep around. If I had him in the house, he would have been giving his keys to his sister Jenny. And I'm certainly now allowing no one to sleep around in my house, behind my back. I remember the girl asking me in Westburns, can, can I have somewhere to stay? Is I need somewhere to stay? I'm not a person to sleep around. And I watch the way they act with different people. They're not living a stable life. Why did they get evicted in the beginning? And I'm certainly not losing my home to be eviction on eviction notice. I'm here as a truthful lady. When I say I helped the guy in the second hand shop, he took over two grand. He took, took two grand off me during the time that he was serving the purpose at the second hand shop at 582 Harrow Road. He claimed himself as the owner when he was never the owner. He passed himself off as the owner. He told his family and friends and wife that he was actually, that he knew a girl that was vulnerable and weak and he could take, take advantage of me and thought that I was another second person of another second victim. He's taking, he's ta taking photographs to nick them. And what was going through my mind, did he nick these photographs to try and murder me? So whatever revenge he had against me, he was going to set me up and tell me to come round the house and then try and murder me at the same time so his family wouldn't know anything that I obviously believe, that they believed him, that, he took the, that I took his business off him. Not really believing the interests that he took money off me of two grand and I had to go through the banks to get the receipts and in place of that I had to go to the insolvency and I had to go to the actual I had to go to uh, the trading standards and health department offices this guy is well known on the Harrow Road I've got photographs of this guy 
he makes himself very smart late at night and asks to talk to me sexually. My concerns is he's glad he's very very lucky he's only talking to an adult that I play into his hands by talking to him to get him to know him to play along his game because at the end of the day I know that I can keep myself sweet with him to prevent my home being a brothel and this is what I have to do and I have to put warnings to him I wrote letters to his own GP in the past to put down what he's done to me and he asked me to retract that letter and I said I'm not retracting no letter for you or for anyone after what you done you brought a woman in my home into my bedroom when you took full of shoes and then from there the girl walked out and another girl came in she came in and saw my settee he wanted to do her, do her on the settee she walked in walked out now I was only told this the other day what this guy is doing this guy needs to be monitored who he meets up he met up with a girl called Sarah um, Dowling Dowland, D-O-W-N-L-A-N-D from Brighton. He's got her on Facebook. But it's strange, he's blocked me from Facebook. And he only uses me on my number, on a private number. So you don't know who his friends are. I want this girl because I had to tell her. If she took him in, he'd take her keys off her and tell someone else that he's got a place in Brighton to go to. She's so weak and vulnerable, she's lost her children. So he uses her as a, as a skibby to try and tell her different lies, and I won't let this happen. So I'm, my concern is, you cannot go around telling lies to different parties, different mothers that are vulnerable to lose children. And as well as that, lose children and lose a home included. And social services will always look for this, for the best interests of a child. If you're involved with a man that's looking for a brothel, you'll end up losing your home. These vulnerable parents are very edu low educated on Facebook. When you go into Facebook, you've got about 20, 30 mothers a day that social services are very bad. Social services of this, social services of that. But when you go into the real cases, half the cases are all toxic. When I say toxic, they've gone back into the same relationship as a violent relationship and made out they have left that partner when they haven't. And this is the best part about it, is that they've never read the books of Diana Freud and Kathy Glass. Kathy Glass is a foster mother that took in all sorts of foster children that were abused. You'll get mothers that will go out there and say, well, because I was abused as a child, they don't look up their roots before they have a child into a relationship that they could prevent this child being taken, that they could take a case out against social services. I know a mother in Essex I can't speak about. Um, she comes from East London, the Bows of, the Bows of London, East London. I met her at a protest and she's excellent. She said her children were abused and cared by social services or whatever went on. And they said that her children were abused by their mother, which was completely untrue. Now, if I said the mother's name, she could have me. She comes from the East End, but what I'm claiming is now her children have become adults. She's now, they're now d d uh, making an order against social services for the lies they made up. Because she's now found out her boys have come to her as a mother and said they know it's unreal that it was not true what their mother had done. And they always took it their mother was what they were, as on Cape Ball looking after her. And only for this mother I've got to start talking to mothers to be very, very nosy. Now I went to a protest up at the up at the Royal Courts of Justice. I met a certain guy. 
who worked his way round with a lot of parents, very highly intelligent, with a high IQ over 100. He was outside the Royal Court of Justice, another guy I met as a Mackenzie friend. He said, I've done, I helped a woman out. She walked round the corner and was back on drugs and took the piss out of social services. So it meant she would have lost her children again. So he said he never done Mackenzie work after that to help the parents. But what he does do, he films outside the Royal Court of Justice as to what he wants to do. He said 99% of the children are always taken from from children from parents that are either low educated to make the target to adoption targets go up to meet the money. So obviously if they don't meet the adoption targets each month, it makes it bad that new parents that haven't got children need to be met by the system. Um Mr the third party that I can speak about, he's got a lot more information, he's very highly educated. He said when children go into care, when they come out of the system, they need more help and they're not getting it. Social workers are not doing their job. They don't know how to look up medical evidence. If a child's legs are bruised, they come from a plastic pair of boots. They've literally turned around and said these children were beaten. When it's the manufacturers of the who makes the boots. So therefore the mother never looks it up. This could be a cause by the plastic boots. Another issue with social workers is that <laughs> dynalosis of, of the spine of the brittle bones are falling apart when a child's born, that they fall over, they have dyspraxia. You'll get a mother's child will fall over called dyspraxia where they literally the body was never performed. Parents and are, are not looking into the medical history of why this child's falling over. Then you'll get a child will need ADHD. Why isn't it not picking up video music tapes to connect with speech and language? This helps this, the the actual speech and language therapists and the health visitors that have got no children to tell them from their own parenting skills to address it this child is not communicating with music so therefore this child has actually got deafness so therefore they use that as glue ear glue ear comes in place of this as part of speech and language therapists of using music tapes late at night for a child and I always advise a parent to use banana sandwiches strawberry, strawberries on their own part of a carrot to boil a carrot because that's part of the speech and language when they go out. Boil up a carrot and let them chew on it to get their speech come through. A lot of parents that don't know this, they have no idea, insight, what to do. If you get parents, you take it to a library, read a book. If they tear up books and they start tearing up books, you know there is something wrong with the child, that there is ADHD. They can't sit still in a birthday, a, ce a celebration with other parents around the table. This is what my son done to me directly. And this is why I want to help any other parent that don't know or understand what ADHD is. And what autism is. They won't sit still on a pram. They run across the road. They've got no eye, eye in contact with any traffic. This is a communication with social workers that are just trained up by their bosses to come in. You either do this job or we'll sling you out and we'll monitor your child and take your child from you when you have a child. They're asked to do a job directly. It's a policy of law. You're to go in and take that child and make lies up against the parent. And this is claimed by the bosses. But I would like to show them the inside of these places. If they've got any fears, I would like them to go with me, to go there to these places. If they're going to assessments, please do not sign nothing unless you ask them to give you £500 up front. And say, well, I'm not going here, you give me £500 up front. Because once I sign any money over to you, sign anything, without no money being involved, you should be paying me to go to these places. 
because at the end of the day, you're getting the money, you'll get a figure sum of money from me from using my services, from speaking out. So it should be the other way round. I should be getting the 500 for going to these places because I'm losing my job. There's a lot of parents losing their work. So if they go to these centres, are they going to pay them for their own, for their own employment for the time they take out of work? Maureen, what would you like to tell the mothers going through all this and what um, advice would you give them? From my own experience, unless we don't put it out on YouTube from today, of what I spoke about the unemployed, the parents not being aware about the actual floor of the birth certificate, my main experience is for the mothers to get into my home to get to the High Court if they live the other side of north of England. The organisation of fairs and trans transfer fairs put the bill into social services because they've caused this for their children to be nicked um, to make a profit for the government and the state. Now when you become a social worker you're ordered to take these children as punishment to remove the children and they use the social workers as slaves from the bosses. What I want is this case to go out to all the mothers that I'm there to support them. Many mothers are misled and have no trust in Mackenzie Prince because they feel the part the plan is Obviously, is she going to charge? Well, obviously, if I'm going to charge, I'm going to charge you. If I'm going to pay your fare to come to London, I'll obviously want my money back. So how do you expect to get to London? Don't come out with it, oh, I've got no money to get to London because I'm on benefits. We're all on benefits. But we all have to put our money aside and then pay me back £20 a week with money of the transfers of the fares to get down to London. If you want your court case to be heard in London, how do you expect to get your children back? Now, at the end of the day, before it goes to court, the judge will ask you what the facts and findings are or what the social services have done in putting the case straight or what you find is wrong, what a social worker has done wrong. You have to give the evidence of what they've done wrong before you ever get contact um, to remain contact could be in the near future to see how you're going to go on if they've stopped all that contact for a number of months that judge will give that contact back to the mother and in place of that you will get your children returned but you need to amend your statement during the time they've taken your children and this cannot be done six months later three months down the line or six months down the line and say, well, I didn't know what to do. You have to read up on the law. The only person that has faith in the law is God. God knows who's telling the truth. And we only got God in disguise. That's invisible. When we sleep, he looks over us and he's praying. I see him in the room in Holland Park looking at me, asking me, please help this mother. Please help her to a better life. I don't want any parent to run down and take an overdose and lose their life. Because it could have happened to this mother. And what they've done is unreal because her child was sexually abused in care. And it's just, just totally wrong. These parents, these adopted parents and foster carers are getting away with murder. And it's totally untrue. This needs to be addressed. You can't go around abusing children in care, getting away with it, and then moving the child on to somewhere else, to another, to another placement order. I mean, I've known a case now from a third party told me her child was in care, and that's my cousin's child, was in care, but was told he didn't want the food. No, the foster mother had starved the child. But she's twisted and said the child didn't want the food. Well, if the child didn't want the food, the child hasn't got a voice. Now, they can't do anything about it, the police, because the police have monitoring her.
for another child to go in that care order into that placement to see whether she's going to do anything wrong to the next child. <laughs> this child actually come back to the mother after being in care so long and wants to go back to his mother. This mother's living in a damp property in Norfolk and the housing have done nothing to help her and the social workers are at fault here. They have a right and a, due, a job and duty of care to move that mother and they've done nothing. So I want the case to be moved and I would like to speak to my cousin about this. So I need someone to speak up for the way she's been abused by the system of social services. She should have been helped to get a place, a movement of a stable home. I'm more concerned about Joanne, my own cousin, because she's losing her voice through the dampness. I've become involved that she should have a support worker called From Heston Housing. So I'm involved myself with another agency that helps supporting parents that are in the middle of where they have mental health problems. They will support parents with dampness. I'm wondering whether any parent out there knows about um, Hester Housing that help parents. I've known a lot of mothers that <coughs> have been diagnosed in the wrong way. I've got constipation and instead they've got a tumour and then not very seriously ill. I have met some very, very lovely friends in my time since my child was taken. I met a, a lovely mother in Ireland, Tracy Morris, but she's but she used the evidence because I wouldn't speak about my own late parents. She slandered my father very badly. Well at the end of the day she had a daughter. That was a drug abuser. Now she can slag down my father. What is she doing about her own daughter? No disrespect. Her daughter died at the hands of social services. And I find that disgraceful because they have got a job and duty. They left her at a bus stop. Her child grandchildren was taken off her. But at the end of the day, it's totally disgraceful to run down my late parents. At the end of the day, when her daughter was living with a drug addict. So where does she leave herself? Tracy Morris was going around with a social worker and her friend who was up to no good, was putting on, putting on on about a child snatcher of Cheeky Cheeky Bang Bang. And then she had the cheek tell me to take it off the wall. Now to me this is totally wrong. What sort of friends have we got out there to make, put up the wrong information about good friends that you think you've got good friends. This is Cheeky Cheeky Bang Bang good to take children away. So I want parents to be aware of Mr. of another guy, Mr. Barnes in Essex. He's a paid informer by social services. He goes and investigates the parents and then takes their children, but I don't know the full investigation. Formerly I have got evidence from parties, from third parties that got investigations that he's a paid informer and gets paid £400. But now, I believe he was on the way to be in jail from next year because of what he's done to somebody else's case. Because he actually slandered someone else's case. Um, and it's totally wrong. He goes out to make out he's helping people, but he wants them in to have brothels, I believe, from a third party. Uh, there was just amazing cases if you don't get to see them. So I want you to be aware of who you're involving yourselves with certain Mackenzie friends. You can't trust the Mackenzie friends out there. I have to put the names out there to know that you can not be trusted with these names. Because if you end up with someone, you'll end up having your children being taken into the care system. So you have to be careful who your Mackenzie friends are. The reason why I've done this is because there's only certain friends I trust and this is the reason why I want to name certain people that if you do come to my home I will recommend you to the right professionals, not anyone who's a crook and I'm certainly not on that level. So I want you to have the best trust in me 
and that you will go the right path.